Hi everyone, it's Rax. By the time that this video launches, Last Epoch's first cycle is going to launch. There's a ton of new things, and I'm gonna do what every content creator shouldn't do. I'm gonna try to give you all the info in one video. What I'm supposed to do is make five separate videos to milk all the views and the money. Nope, I'm gonna talk about everything right now. Uh, I'm gonna very quickly summarize a lot of the new stuff that's coming. I already did that in a previous video. I'm gonna talk to you about uh, tier lists and builds and strategies, it, everything that you need to know for the cycle one coming out in a few hours. Let's get started. So let's quickly cover what are some of the new things that are launching? Like, do you even, have you been following along with it? Do you know what's coming? Well, first of all, in the game, they've added evade. So now you can try to maneuver around and evade certain attacks. That's awesome. They've added a pinnacle boss system with Harbingers. It's going to be a big race, and there's ladders as well to 100 to fight the boss. There's a ton of class balance stuff, trying to bring up, you know, the Forge Guards that suck and nerf the stuff that's way too overpowered. There's loot filter enhancements. Now you can filter by legendary potential, and now um, you can do multiple affixes and things like that. I know you guys are going to have a question about how does that connect to my loot filter. We'll talk about that. They're making faction updates, item updates, enemy updates. There's 30 new uniques coming out. I mean, there's just tons of stuff. So this is a very, very significant up, uh, update to Last Epoch. So if you like the game, you should absolutely check it out. So the first thing I want to tell you, one of the most common questions I've been getting preparing for this is, Rax, what about that detonating arrow build that you made? Or what about the Wraith Lord build that you made? I love those builds. Is it gonna, is it gonna be there uh, next season? Well, if you read the very last line of the stagger, you can see it's already been changed. Now it says plus 65 melee damage for directly used detonating arrows. Remember how we used to throw the mines and then they would explode and then they would throw our detonating arrows and then they'd do all the damage? So we just lost essentially a shitload of damage by them changing that, trying to, you know, break this mechanic. After I do the race, I'll come back and see if I can tinker this build and try to make it work, but this has significantly changed. The other really popular build that I posted a guide on was the Wraith Lord build. It is still good. It looks like it got quite a few nerfs. How good will it be? I don't know. It was insanely OP, so maybe they just brought it back down to planet Earth. I will be revisiting these builds that you guys loved from last season, and obviously, hopefully making more for you as we learn stuff. Um, but that's kind of the situation. I, I would not go for this in the beginning because they have made that change. So then your next question is probably like, oh my God, okay, well, that's what I was going to do. What, what should I do? Well, you already know what I'm going to tell you. Maxroll has already solved all of this for you. They have read the patch notes, they have tested stuff, and the lovely team of Last Epoch has made new leveling tier lists, speed farming tier lists, boss tier lists, and they have tons of new guides. So what you're probably, again, trying to make things easy on you, what you're probably wondering is, Rax, just tell me what's really good. Like, okay, I can read this. I can go read through everything. Can you make a recommendation? And I can. I've been testing around a bunch of different things. I've been reading this. So let's make, let's make a selection for all of these. So for the Acolyte, I played this today. This build absolutely rules. I would go Warlock. It's really good for leveling. Um, and then if we click Acolyte here, S tier for speed farming. And then for bossing, it's in A tier. Uh, SSA, that's about as good as you're going to get as EHG tries to balance last epoch as much as possible. The Torment Warlock rules. Runs around, it lays kind of like a firewall thing that shoots stuff everywhere, makes stuff bleed, lights stuff on fire. It's truly incredible. Um, it's very easy to play, kind of low APM unless you're uh, fighting a really tough monster. You can just run around and just throw the Chthonic Fissures, whatever they're called, and uh, they just destroy everything. You're looking for a super powerful build that can clear all content that's real easy? Um, definitely start with this Warlock leveling build right here, and the Chthonic Fissure is what's going to just instantly delete everything. Okay, so that's what I would do if you're an Acolyte. If you're a mage, I tried this. Admittedly, it's it's not my favorite, and it's getting a bit big buff next season, but 
there's no doubting its output after the changes come through. And that's the sorcerer. And you're going to go glacier. So Glacier is going to do extremely well. If we look here, it's S tier for farming. Uh, for leveling, it's, it's getting the double green arrow going up to A tier. And for bossing, it is at the top of A tier. So you throw a Glacier, it has three hits deep, deep, deep. So you kind of want to back up slightly and make sure, definitely make sure that the third hit um, hits the enemy that you want. Uh, it's going to be extremely powerful. So that's what I would go for Mage. I've, I've played almost all these builds at this point now, believe it or not. I made 13 characters last season, not counting all the characters that I made before it came out, or Cycle, I should say. Uh, if you haven't played Glacier before and you really want to go for the Magic Caster, that's, that's the direction I would go there. Uh, for the Prime List... Not as good of news. It's like kind of between shaman and druid. Not, I mean, nothing too great here. I really like these swarm blade builds. When I play these swarm blade builds, I feel like I'm scyther, and uh, you just go around and just chop everything down. I definitely had a lot of fun playing these. Um, B tier for speed farming. Uh, it's at least A tier for bossing, which this is important because we're going for the everyone's going to be trying to kill the new pinnacle boss not the best situation for prime list at least from what we've seen early on i'd love to be wrong hopefully we get in there and we actually find out prime list is godly but it's kind of like the druid in diablo 4 where we're, we're just we're trying to play catch up here uh rogues <laughs> rogues just dominate man rogues have so many good builds so blade dancer or falconer will be godly for leveling for you and then when you get into speed farming you can go the bleed or the dive bomb they nerf dive bomb well it's still s tier so it's still gonna be godly shadow daggers has been a fan favorite for tons and tons of, of rogue players forever still s tier and then you go to the bossing, and Ballista Falconer is also S tier, and Shadow Daggers and the Dive Bomb and the Bleeds, all of them are really highly ranked. So any of these will work. The Falconer, the Blade Dancer, the Shadow Daggers, the Ballista, the Dive Bomb, any of them will be good. They're good the entire time. I made tons of these last season. Um, a little bit, uh, unless they made some changes, a little bit on the squishier side. But, I mean, if you're playing softcore, who cares? Doesn't matter. Die all you want. And then we go to the Sentinel, and it looks like the Bleed Hammered In is going to be a very good choice if you uh, are willing to go back to your Diablo 2 roots. Everybody loves the Hammered In. S tier for leveling. Okay. And then we have A tier for speed farming, and then we have A tier for bossing. Pretty damn good. So there's a recommendation for all of them. Uh, let me show you something in one of these builds. So if I go to Warlock, or if I, can I click on one of these? If I click on this, um, a lot of people are a little confused. Um, I'll be honest with you, I was confused as well. So if I'm confused, everyone's going to be confused. So um, when we go here, this little spot right here, Skills and Passives, has all the information that you need right here. You don't have to move. That's the idea of this. How do we fit as much information into right here so you're not doing this while you're playing, so you're not scrolling, right? Okay, so usually there is a build that you use before you get your mastery. You get your mastery, at, I think, at the end of chapter two, and there's nine or ten chapters in the game. So you get your mastery very early. So there is a build for what you do in the very beginning. So you would spec into Rip Blood. Okay, and you'd build it this way, put 12 points in it, and then you'd spec into Wandering Spirits, and you'd build it this way, and you'd put in these 20 points right here. Now what you do is you click the next step, and you might say, holy shit, this just went from almost no information to my final setup? Like, bro, I'm still leveling. This has all the information that you need. So what you do, is, for example, if you want to continue on with your passives, you'd click into the passive like this, and it's got a scroll bar right here from the beginning of the game all the way forward. And then this is obviously the order in which you 
ass assign your skills, okay? So for Spirit Plague, if you want to know what you do in the beginning, you just drag the scroll bar over. It's all, it's all there from the beginning all the way to the end. So don't be, don't be confused when, like I was, when you go from, okay, I'm unlocking my mastery. Okay, I got my mastery. A uh, final setup. Holy shit, how do I actually put in my skills? I don't know how to do this. Yeah, you do. Just use the scroll bar. Just use the scroll bar. There it is. Okay. Another thing that I want to tell you, in Last Epoch tomorrow, uh, if you go into the game and you go into your input keys, all of them are going to reset to default for tomorrow. EHG said it's going to happen this one time only. It's not going to happen every cycle, but it is going to happen tomorrow. They, I don't know, whatever. They had, for some reason, it's going to happen. So. The very first thing you should do when you log in is check your key bindings. If you don't use the default key bindings, check and see if anything is off because they will reset tomorrow. Okay, in case you didn't read that. So uh, let's talk about loop filters. So if you did not see last season, it was actually one of my most popular builds I've ever made ever at 200,000 views. I made a loot filter in this paste bin that works for all classes and builds. And people, people love this thing. I was very surprised. People were asking me for it. People love it. We've spent like a million hours making it. Okay, so here it is. So there's two questions. The first question is, does it still work? And I tried it today, I have it on. Yes, it works. It's beautiful. It still works. It's great. Awesome. Next question that you have. The loot filter is getting some updates. Now we can filter by legendary potential. Now we can filter by multiple affixes and things like that. So your next question would be, Rax, are you going to update it? And if you're going to update it, when are you going to update it? Well, yes, I will update it. And when will I do it? I don't have a choice. You guys want to play Last Epoch now, when it starts. I can't wait. So. On the very first day, I'll be in the hardcore race. We'll see if I can even stay alive. It's every character I make dies. Let's see if I can get through the hardcore race and go super fast and kill the boss. Probably die somewhere along the way. It's okay. We'll have fun. Then, the moment that I'm out of the race, I'm going to start looking at this loot filter. I'm going to try to add all the little tricky things into it that I possibly can and make it better. The moment I have it done, I will put it on YouTube. So you can watch that video. I'll make the updates for it. I'll make it better. And then you're going to be frying, okay? So I'm going to commit to that. Once the race is over, once I'm out of the race, the very next thing I'm going to do is go into this loot filter, make it better. I'll make a paste bin. I'll make a video. You can have it. You can enjoy it all season, okay? So that is going to happen. Another thing to understand about tomorrow, this is how I... I think it's going to be from reading all the patch notes. I think the XP is going to be harder. So it's going to be more difficult to get to level 100. That's for a few reasons. One, again, from what I'm understanding from the patch notes, they're nerfing the gym tomes, my favorite thing. These things, these books, the tomes of experience in the bottom right. I call them gym tomes because I'm stupid. I think they're, these things are going to get nerfed. I'm still going to target them and go for them and see how much they level us up. In the, in the previous, in the first cycle or whatever, they were by far um, the best thing to go for. Like, by far. Because, remember, leveling up gives you passive points. And passive points are valuable. They're permanent power increases to your character. But what I think, and uh, so just to add a little bit more here, I think the later levels are harder, 98, 99, all those levels, I think they made them harder. And I think that the XP scaling at higher corruption is lower. So I don't know if there are any other changes. I don't know if I've encapsulated all this, but I think leveling is going to be harder in general. So what I think last the, the direction that EHG is going with this is I think they're going for it more like Path of Exile, where you're not supposed to get to 100. Like the end of your journey is like 90 or 95. And then if you are a real blast and want to grind out those final levels, you can if you want to. And it's like a big challenge. It's like uh, the total opposite of Diablo 4, 
where Diablo 4 just makes leveling easier and easier and easier and easier. They just want you to fly to 100, and then they're saying that the end game really starts. So be, be aware as you're playing. The, the point of this is, is don't have like 100 as a final goal if you don't have a lot of time to play. And pay very close attention to how good these rewards are. I think there was something in the patch notes about how at a certain level they fall off. It might have been 85. I might be making this up. But before, these were by far the best results to target. I literally just went through the monoliths. And if it had this book, this Jim Tome, I just went for it. I just went in a straight line for all of those. I don't care about anything else. I just want to level up. Now it's probably going to be a little bit more cerebral. So I just wanted to call that out, be, uh, pay attention to that. So there is some good news, though. So your, le your leveling to 100 might be harder, if I'm understanding it right. The good news is, is they're making a blessing change, which will not only help your main characters, but make alts a lot easier. So the way that I understand it is, as you unlock all the blessings when you beat, uh, when you beat the different timelines, they're going to have like a, a little bank that you can plug the blessings into. When you're going through on your alt, they will allow you to get the minimum value of those blessings if you've unlocked them. And then when you beat the timeline or when you beat the monolith, then you will unlock the value that you have unlocked on your main character. If I have read that right, and if I have articulated that right, it's just a hell of a lot better. You have a bank that you can pick from. So switching used to be an absolute nightmare. You get a different piece of gear and you had solved your gear a certain way. So you picked a specific blessing. Now you got a better piece of gear, but now you have the wrong blessing. So you have to redo it until you hit it or whatever. That system sucked. This new one is way better and it's going to help your alts. That's something to look forward to. So pay attention to that and make sure that you use that. I made a video last season about how different ways to level up. There's, uh, uh, I mean, we can just talk about them all real quick. So one way, and probably the way that most people will, uh, almost everyone will do it unless they watch content creators, is they'll just go straight through the campaign, which is fine. You can absolutely do that. Go ahead. It's really not that bad. If you're not racing in 100, if you're not going for the world first boss kill, it doesn't matter at all. But there is one thing that's going to hurt you about doing the campaign or hurt a lot of people. You have to fight all the bosses, which means at the end of Act 7, I believe, you have to fight Lagan, and a lot of people hate him. Remember Squidward, the big squid guy that smashes you and he's going to kill you? Well, with that strategy, you're going to have to fight him. What you can do instead, which is, in my opinion, a much better strategy, and the strategy that I will use, is you just go until you kill the big tree in the icy area. So when you get to the icy area, I think it's called, let me see if I can find it here as I'm chatting. I'm so bad at finding anything on the last epoch map, man. Um, it starts with an H, I'm almost certain. Hyboria or something. Anyway, when you get to the icy area, you'll notice it. About halfway through or toward the end of it, there's a big old tree boss. When you fight the tree boss, here it is. When you fight the tree boss, you don't have to continue any further. So what you will do when you beat the tree boss is you will press M, and I need to, let me hide my webcam for one second to show you this. Down here in the bottom left corner, it says passive points, 15, idle slot rewards, 8. I did the run today in 2 hours and 33 minutes with a brand new character, no twink gear, no nothing. I had literally nothing, simulated a brand new cycle start. I killed the tree boss, and if you did every side quest that does reward a passive point and an idle slot up until the tree boss, you will have unlocked everything for your character. This means that you don't have to do the rest of the campaign, and you can go straight into monoliths. This is an excellent strategy because it lets you skip Lagan, it saves you time, 
And the only thing that you're missing by doing that is if you kill the final boss at the end of Act 9, I believe, I think it's 9 acts in Last Epoch, you get plus 1 to all stats, which is significant. That's a very, very nice uh, buff, right? 1 to all stats up here. So you say, well, Rax, uh, I just lost that buff. Why are you telling me to go to the end game without that? What you can do later is you can use a dungeon key. I believe, I believe the dungeon, I could be wrong. I think the one that you run is Temporal Sanctum. The chat comments can correct me if I have the wrong dungeon. But you complete one of the three dungeons, and it takes you to Act 9, which means you get to skip the end of Act 7. You never have to fight Lagon, and you get to skip Act 8, and you're already in Act 9, and then you just go kill the final boss later for the plus one to all stats. Gets you in the end game earlier. Don't have to fight Lagon, saves you time in the campaign, and you can go with the plus one doll stats later. So, without memorizing a ton of things, just do a bunch of side quests. In fact, if you want to, you can just do all the side quests in Acts 1 through 7. When you get to the icy area, just remember, okay, Rax told me if I kill the tree boss and turn in everything, then in the bottom left corner here, I should have all the passives and all the idols. If you're missing any of them, you can just look it up on Maxwell or just Google it anywhere and just look at the quests that reward passives and idols. By the way, when you go in here, you can mouse over all of the different quests and it'll tell you what it gives you if you beat them. So this gives you XP and gold. We don't give a French toast about that. We only care about passives and idols. So this one's bad. XP and gold, don't care. XP and gold, no. XP and gold, no. But the ones here that I've completed, idle inventory expansion, you must do these. So that's a way to tell in-game, okay, well, which, which quests here do I have to do? That's how you can figure it out. And then uh, one other hint is there's a new faction in the game. Obviously, you want to progress it because it's part of the cycle. It's with the Harbingers and the Pinnacle boss, I believe. So obviously, interact with that faction. Um, so the current factions, Circle of Circle of Fortune and Merchant Guild, SSF and Group Play and Trading. I keep getting asked, well, which one's better? I, I can tell you which one's better for sure. The one that's better is the one that will make you enjoy the game more. What do you like better? Do you like farming some gear? And if it's really valuable, you like to go trade it, get some money, use that gold to buy new items? Is that how you have fun in the game? Then go the merchant skill because they're rebalancing it. They're making them rank up to 12 now. They're making some improvements. Honestly, EHG has done a pretty good job kind of balancing it. They're both pretty damn strong. Or do you like to play SSF? Do you like to blast? You want to know what? I just want to juice my prophecies and I just want to blast. I just want to send it and I want to find my own stuff. I don't want to go to the marketplace and trade. Fine. Do that. What am I going to play? I'm going to play COF. I'm going to play the SSF one. I'm not going to trade. But do the one that is more fun to you. Simple as that. That's the one you should do. That's a thousand percent the correct answer. Do the one that's more fun. And I, I think that's it. So we covered a lot of the new stuff that's coming out. Know that some of your favorite builds will be changing. The Wraith Lord came way down. The gel cores with the, the dual detonating arrow might be dead on arrival, lost 130 damage. That's a shitload of damage, but who knows? Maybe we can make it work. Talked about all the tier lists and Maxwell and the build guides, and I showed you that graphic. The... It's got all the information there. Just use the scroll bar. The reason why we built it that way, so you don't have to scroll around the page. You scroll side to side, sure, but you're not scrolling up and down. Give us feedback. If you hate it, tell us. Write us a ticket in the Maxwell Discord. Tell us if you hate it. Tell us why. Tell us the problems that you're having. And we will read it and we will fix it. I guarantee that. Your key bindings reset. Make sure that you fix them. Universal loot filter should work. I'll paste it down below if, if, you, if you haven't seen it before. I will redo it almost immediately so you can have it again. I'll make it better. Think XP is going to be more difficult. If that is true, keep it in mind. Also keep it in mind with the rewards that you're picking. Pay attention to how much XP this is giving you or if it's totally worthless. 
enjoy the new blessings, unlock a bunch of them. It's going to help your main character and your alts as you get better gear. One of my favorite strategies, the one that I'm going to do, is go to the icy area, Heoboria, whatever it's called. And after you kill the tree boss, you should have all of the passive and idle slot rewards. If you don't have them, you skipped some side quest somewhere that would have given it to you. Then you can go to Monolith, do a dungeon, and kill the final boss later. And finally, join a faction right away, whether you want to trade or play SSF. They're both good. Play however you want. All right? Well, that's it, guys. I should have broken that up into like eight videos and put like eight Raid Shadow Legend sponsors, sponsors in these, but uh, not, uh, not this time. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to be blasting Last Epoch. I'm going to be in the hardcore race. I, I, I'll talk, be honest with you, I'll consider it a win if I don't die. I keep dying because I'm trying to go too fast and i am got no gear. I got nothing to craft on my gear and I just die. But we, I, it doesn't matter. We're full sending it. Who cares? If we die, whatever, we'll make another character. It's going to be a lot of fun. Love to have you on the stream if you want to come hang out. Hope you guys have an amazing time. Really like Last Epoch. Let's go blast. Thank you.